March 1st, 2018. I'm going to ask you about that. Oh, yeah. You're in a room with Ezra McCandless, right? That is correct. Without just general, you were talking to her about the John Hass Hansen investigation, correct? That is correct. Um, near the end of the interview, just to put it in context, I'm going to ask you some things about what you said near the end of the interview, okay? Okay. Um, by that time, you had already asked her many, many questions about what happened regarding John Hansen. Agreed? That's probably correct, yes. And I'm not going to ask the content, but she gave you her answers about what she says happened. Agreed? Yes. You told her, you said these words. Flirting doesn't mean that he has the right to have sex with you. Yes. You agreed with her that it's not right for him to sleep with her when she was that drunk. I don't know if those were my exact words. You agreed with her, correct? Correct, I did agree with her. You, you said that's definitely a possibility of a crime is him taking an advantage of someone in that position, correct? Yes. You said to her, it's a very vulnerable situation that you are in. I'm sure I said that, yes. You told her, I'll do everything I can to help you. Regarding that case, yes. And I would imagine regarding any case. Correct. Yeah. Um, and at the end of that, you did what you could to set her up with a crisis worker. Agreed? Yes. And I don't know if you knew it then, but you probably know it now. She had already been previously also set up with some crisis workers. Agreed? At that time, I didn't know that. But, the but you do know it now. Correct? I do now, yes. Yes. And so um, you, um, did you give her brochures? Uh, no, I believe I took her up to the victim witness office, or I gave her directions up to the victim witness office. You were, um, you've been here in court for this entire trial, right? Yes, I have. You were here when uh, Mr. Vang from your, uh, from your department testified, right? Yes, I was. And you've seen uh, some of the, uh, and I think you were here when uh, Investigator Stalker from Dunn County testified, right? Yes, I was. And you, the, what Mr. Vang talked about regarding victim witness and what Mr. Stalker showed regarding the pictures with those brochures, that's all consistent with the same type of information support that you were providing her with. Agreed? I was taking her up to the victim witness office where she would meet with an uh, advocate. Again, consistent with all of that information that had been previously provided, right? I would assume so, yes. Okay. Um, when you, after March 1st, you continued to investigate uh, the matter between Ezra McCandless and John Hansen, is that right? That is correct. Um, you interviewed at least three men, agreed? Or, you interviewed at least two men, agreed? Let me, I'm going to, that's a poor question because I think you're struggling for time. Let me frame it in a time. Okay? okay. In March of 2018, you interviewed two men regarding that, agreed? I believe so, yes. And then at some point in 2019 in August, you interviewed a third man about that. That is correct. Okay. When, so now I want to fast forward to March 23rd in that first interview that we heard yesterday, okay? Okay. During that interview, you were at that point considering her as a victim of a potential sexual assault, right? Or at least an attempted assault. Yes. And during that interview, she told you about her journaling. That is correct. She says, um, I've been journaling a lot. Is that right? I don't have the exact transcript in front of me to follow along. I'm sorry. That's all right. 
we have a copy of that. You know, it's been marked as Exhibit 176. Is that the transcript of your interview of Ms. McCandless on March 23rd, 2018? Yes, it is. Thank that, you. That was the interview that we listened to yesterday. Is that right? It appears to be a yes. Okay. Um, on line 81, if you want to follow along. Yes, please. What page, Council? I don't have page. There are just lines on the whole thing. Are you able to follow along, Mr. Brock? Is mine the same as your? I have page two written on the bottom of mine. Yep. I'm on line 81, do you, is, are there lines on the left side of the page? Regardless of the page, there's lines, correct? Yes. And they go in numerical order from one to up into the hundreds, correct? That is correct. Um, so on line 81 is blank on my copy. Okay. Oh, 181 or 81? 87, perhaps. I can't read my own writing. My apologies. Okay. 87 does have the word journaling on it. Okay. Thank you. Sorry for that. She says on 87, I've been journaling a lot, right? Yes, she does. She then on 120 says, I'm feeling really good today and really confident. Is that right? Yes. You were asking her that essentially in the beginning, like why did she go to Alex's, right? That's part of what you were trying to figure out in the interview. I'm not, just in general, one of the things you were trying to figure out is why did she go to Alex's, right? And there was a lot of things we were trying to figure out in, during this interview. But one of the things you were trying to figure out is why she went to Alex's, agreed? I don't know if that was specifically one of them on this one but it may have came up along the way. You were asking her about what she did that day? Yes. You were asking her to go chronologically through what she did that day? I believe I did in this. I know I did in the second one ask chronologically. I just asked her what she did this day. And you asked again on March 23rd to go along chronologically, and she gave you answers, right? She did answer my questions. I, I can't say I used the word chronologically in this interview. I'm not saying you use the word chronologically, sir. I'm saying you asked her questions about what she did on March 22nd when you spoke with her on March 23rd. That is correct. Okay. Are we, are we on the same page? I think so. I'm not literally, figuratively. <laughs> you with me? I'm here. Okay. Um, and she told you, uh, again, she was feeling on line 120, she was feeling really good today and really confident. Yes. She told you on line 121, she says, I should go return some stuff that just kind of makes me feel sad, right? Yes. And in your uh, investigation, you'd learn that she did, in fact, write a journal. Is that right? I did end up learning that, yes. And, um, in fact, she, she never hid that from you. She told you she was journaling, agreed? Agreed. She told you on the 23rd and on the 24th, agreed? Agreed. Um, and you saw the journal when it had been posted. You've read it in the past, right? I have. And at least one of them ends with her phrase, I am worth it. I'm sorry, I don't remember what it ends with. as Exhibit 365. Can I just show it up here for everybody? Is that? Yes, <clears throat> you may. Exhibit 3. <coughs> exhibit uh, 365, you see that sticker? It's upside down. Yes, sir. That's the journal that we've been calling titled Silence Broken, is that right? That is correct. And at the last line of that, essentially, she says, I can become Ezra McCandless again. I am worth it. Is that right? That is correct. And then on exhibit 366, that's another one of her journals, right? Um, can you slide it down so I can see the top, please? Thank you. Yes. Uh, and that's the one that we've been in 
uh, referencing as Journal 2. Agreed? Agreed. And, and at the end of that, um, she says, I know I can be human. I know I can be free. I know I can love. I know I can only strive to never do this again. Agreed? Agreed. And she tells you, you learned through your investigation that one of, that she told other people she was going there to give this journal to Alex. Is that right? You learned through your investigation that she has told other people she was going there to give this journal to Alex. Yes, I, I believe we did, yes. Yeah. You learned that from Jason Mangel, agreed? Yes. You learned that from Max Martinson, agreed? I don't remember if that's what Max said or not. You learned it from Julia Post, agreed? I don't remember on Julia Post, I'm sorry. You remember that Ezra McCandless was talking about these journals to several people, agreed? I do remember that, yes. Um, and in fact, she at one point, I believe in the uh, Instagram accounts, had a conversation about this with Jason Mengel, is that right? There are a lot of conversations in the Instagram account. And that's, that's a very <laughs> fair answer, sir. Um, showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 465. Uh, is this a, uh, it's been previously marked and admitted as this seem appear to be a particular pages of an Instagram business uh, record regarding Ms. McCandless's Instagram account. Yes, it is. You were here in court the other day when, uh, I believe it was Attorney Hahn, went through this five-page document with Jason Mangle when he was on the stand? Uh, yes, I was. Okay. And so I just want to uh, hit some of the high points here to, to... Um, one of the messages from 983 is... Ms. McCandless writing, Tuesday I plan on coming to town and doing an airing before I meet up with you. Yes, that is from her. Yeah. Uh, and she essentially invites Jason to be along with her, right? Yes, she does. And Jason asks, basically, well, what's the errand, correct? Can I just, can you yeah. slide your finger just, sure. yep, I just want to make sure of that. Yep, uh, that was from Jason. What um, page are we on, counsel? I've now moved to page 982, starting from the bottom going up. Okay. Uh, and she then mentions uh, she wants to return stuff to Alex, right? She does. Um, and she says, to be done with that negativity, correct? And to be done with the negativity, yes. Jason texts back and forth for several pages until I get to page 979 where they're talking about the material that we uh, that Alex had of hers and the significance of it. Would that be a fair summary? I believe they're talking about the little prints. Correct. Okay. And then at some point, Jason eventually responds to her and says, well, I don't have to be there for all of this. Correct? Yes, it is from Jason. And then Ezra says, well, I kind of want you to be there, but that's selfish, correct? Yes. And then Jason says, I don't want anything to do with him. Agreed? Uh, can you slide your finger, sure. please? Sorry. Sorry. Uh, yes, that is from Jason. All right. And then she says, I can do it alone. Agreed? That is from her, yes. Okay. And then you learn in your investigation that she does, in fact, go there alone, correct? Yes, on March 22nd. And in your March 23rd interview with you, she talks to you about
taking uh, line 131, I could take a step for myself to be confident. Is that right? Um, it says I could take a step for myself to be inaudible, you know. Do you recall from listening to it yesterday that the inaudible part was her words confident? I don't. All right. On 121, just before that, she said, I should go return some stuff that it just kind of makes me feel sad. Right? Objection asked and answered. It wasn't asked and answered. Overruled. On line 121. I, before I was talking about line 131, so if I misspoke, now I'm asking you about 121. Are you with me, Mr. Yep. Rock? I am here. I am. Uh, yes, that is what that line says. Okay. Um, and again, your investigation confirms that she had stuff and she told other people she wanted to return it to Alex and then she went there and she gave this stuff to Alex. Is that right? I can't confirm or confirm that she actually brought stuff to give to him. Okay. You were here in trial when Dave Studing testified, were you not? I was. Did you remember him telling you that she had a heating pad with her? I do remember that. And that's something that she had told you that she was going to return to him, correct? That and bookmarks, yes. So there was some corroboration of that. Agreed? Agreed. Um, fair to say, again, this is broad strokes. Okay. I want to go through the whole thing on the 23rd. But on the 23rd, she talks to you about what she did. Or excuse me, on the 23rd, she's talking about the 22nd. Right? Amongst yes. other things. Amongst other things, yes. And on the 20, what she tells you about the 22nd is uh, she's at her dad's, she drives to Eau Claire, she goes with Max, she eventually goes to Alex's house. Some other details are in there, correct? Correct. Um, and through your investigation and through much of this trial, that's been corroborated. Agreed? Yes. Through the videos of her driving, videos of her at races, speaking with witnesses, correct? Correct. Um, but then when it starts to talk about the time between Alex's and Farmer Sipples, she doesn't remember. That's what she tells you, right? Uh, during, are we talking on the 23rd? On the 23rd, yes, sir. Yeah, she does say she doesn't remember. Okay. She uses different ways to express I don't remember, whether it's fuzzy or dark, but she's repeatedly and consistently saying I don't remember about that time frame between Alex's house and Farmer Sipple's house. Agreed? Yes. Um, but what she does tell you on line 361 is all I can feel is the feelings and not like seeing. Correct? I'm sorry, what line? Line 361. Okay. She tells you, all I can feel is the feelings and not like the scene. Agreed? Yes. She tells you on line 325, all I can feel is like anxiety and like pain and stuff. Agreed? What line again, counsel? 325, sir. Thank you. I just feel like all I can feel like anxiety and like pain and stuff. She says that? Yes. Um, on that 23rd interview, I think she mentions to you at least nine times that she felt scared during that time when we're talking about where she doesn't, she says she doesn't remember. Agreed? I know she mentioned this word scared nine times. I don't know if she mentioned she was scared. Okay. Uh, well, on line 338, she says, I was so scared. Yes. On line 354, she says, uh, in describing it almost in a third-person manner, it's a feeling like, and then you're scared. Agreed? You could read the whole line for 354 if you would, sir. What's happening and you're scared, and you okay. just need to keep walking and walking. And I should say, uh, to put that into context, why don't you read the sentence that uh, you think incorporates the entire statement? I just, 
remember being really cold and just kind of like, it's kind of like feeling of like, you don't know what's happening and you're scared and you just need to keep walking and walking. And on line 355, she says, kind of like it felt kind of like a scared animal. Correct. And on line 401, she describes when she's at Sipple's, Farmer Sipple's house, that she was like really scared and confused. Correct. And on line 410, she says, I just remember being really scared. Correct. And then line 550. 547, she talks about a time in the past about what Alex did, the cutting of himself that really scared her. Yes, and referring to Alex cutting himself. And on line 597, she tells you she remembers being really scared and being in a lot of pain, right? Yes. And then on line 901, she talks about uh, how I just felt scared. Agreed? Uh, what line? I'm sorry. 901. Correct. Um, and previous to that, on both lines 601 and 609, she talked about being hurt. What was the line? I'm sorry. 601. I'm sorry. And that wasn't the first time that she had told you that she had hurt when she had been with Alex. Agreed? She told you that back on March 1st, didn't she? I don't remember specifically. Judge, permission to play a section of that recording? Well, just a question. I assume that you're going to be going on for quite a while. If this recording would kind of end that chapter if I'm okay. able to do that. All right, and I don't have any word yet on lunch, but so go ahead and play that portion if you if you wish. Um, and is this the March 23rd interview? This I, I want to play a portion from the March 1st interview that you were asked questions about okay. yesterday. Do you remember what interview I'm talking about, sir? Yes. This is at the not at the Mayo Hospital but it's at the Eau Claire Police Department, agreed? Correct. This is a couple of days after she had spoken with Investigator Vang about John Hansen, is that right? That is correct. And then you called up, I think, the next day and asked her if she'd be willing to come down and she cooperated and came down and spoke with you. That is correct. And during that conversation, she told you about, you asked her who else she'd had sex with. Yes. And she told you about Alex Woodworth, right? That is correct. And that's, she told you that during that sex, she was hurt. I don't remember that. I'm sorry. Judge, I'm going to play the portion. If I can find it, I'm going to press mute from 1243.20 to 1244.20. Just give me a... Do we have, uh, is this marked as an exhibit? No, but I will certainly do so, Your Honor. All right, and have you uh, talked with the state about, about this in terms of, uh, I should know, but is there any objection? No, Your Honor. Okay, so uh, if it is going to be played, we need it to be in some way or another uh, marked uh, or have a uh, thumb drive or yes, disc or something. I will do that right over the lunch break. Okay? All right. You just have to make sure that's part of the record. Okay, and I'm advised that that will be uh, Exhibit 693. Pressing play at the 1243-20 minute mark. Because he knows all about this. Okay. Have you had any sexual intercourse with anyone else after, since this incident? After me and Jason broke up, after... I, after what happened with John, I went over to a friend's house to talk to them about what happened. And I was just hanging out with them and talking to them. And then they just, they wanted to just, 
after they were like, well, you can just forget it if you just, you know, sleep with me. You can just forget all about it. So I was like, I don't know what to do. I guess this is fine. Okay. Who was that? That was just someone named Alex. I don't even, I don't talk to them anymore or anything. So was it, ju- was it just Alex that you had sex with that night? Yeah. I just had relations with Alex because he said that he loved me and that he'll take care of me now. And that he's my best friend, and I can trust him. And I said, okay, I guess. Okay. Even though it didn't hurt. Okay. You know? Pressed pause. Did you hear that, uh, Mr. Prock? The, did you hear the, just not anything in particular, but you heard that, right? Yes. And at the end, uh, when she was talking about the sex with uh, Alex Woodworth, she said, and it hurt. Those were the last words that she said before you paused it, yes. Okay. Um, and then just briefly, it, in the beginning of this, she's using pronouns like them and they. Agreed? I wasn't paying that close attention to that. Okay. You're, you've spoke with Ms. McCann and Ezra several times, have you not? I have. It's not, uh, if you come to learn that when she uses the pronouns them and they, she might be referring to a singular person rather than a... Uh, multiple people. I have learned that, yes. She uses it in a sense of a gender-neutral pronoun for some people who may prefer gender-neutral pronouns, right? She has been known to do that, yes. Okay. Those are. The, I think that ends this chapter, Judge, if we want to break or I can <coughs> continue on. All right. Um, any word on lunch? I don't have any word on lunch yet. No. All right. Well, I assume it's going to be here soon unless you've forgotten about us okay so ladies and gentlemen we're gonna take a break for lunch um, and uh, we'll try to keep it basically be one hour from when we break here uh, so you get a little bit more than one hour so uh, we'll excuse you at this time all rise all right uh, there I think there are only uh, really two sidebars that we have to address. Um, right around uh, 936, 937, there was an objection, and then it was withdrawn. Uh, that was by Mr. Nelson. And then uh, there was uh, another objection, and this was uh, related to, I believe it was Exhibit 692 that eventually was received. It was published to the jury. The objection that um, Mr. Nelson made related to that being speculative on the part of, it would be speculative on the part of the witness, uh, Detective Proc, as to who, who those messages were sent to or intended for. Um, and uh, the uh, objection uh, was sustained, um, and, and basically because the, uh, the exhibit has been received, uh, they are, were considered statements of the defendant, Ms. McCandless. And so uh, they were published to the jury. Um, anything in addition that counsel would like to say about that sidebar? Nothing, Your Honor. Okay. And um, then uh, I think a little bit more important sidebar was uh, about 11.35 in the beginning before cross-examination started. And this relates to, I think, how the question, some of the questioning that uh, Mr. Nelson started cross-examination with, and that related to the things or statements made by Detective Proc to the defendant at the conclusion of the March 1st interview, which was an interview regarding the sexual assault investigation involving John Hansen. And really the argument was over, and the state objected to those statements being received uh, for the truth of the matter, and... Um, the uh, state did not object if they were received not for the truth of the matter. And, uh, it, it, and this is how the court's going to address The statements came in, um, and it made more sense to me after, obviously, hearing what the statement was. Um, and uh, I believe that this will be handled by an instruction to the jury at the close of the case and how they are to use other this panorama evidence. Um, and uh, so, you know, the jury will be instructed that they're not to decide here, to, you know, in this trial whether there was a sexual assault or there wasn't a sexual assault. Um, the court believes that those statements 
are appropriate to be in for the state of mind uh, for Ms. McCandlin, as, as, as argued by Mr. Nelson at, at the sidebar, essentially, um, you know, asserting that she did not use the, the term rape. And uh, as I take it, you know, the and, uh, detective was essentially uh, saying, well, if this happened, then, you know, that, you know, would be, it could be a crime or would be a crime and what have you. However, and, and that's why the state obviously is objecting for the truth of the matter because um, it's, it's not being received to show that she was in fact sexually assaulted. Um, so uh, it, we're not going to have a big debate about that. At least uh, the idea is, again, that this is panorama evidence and, uh, and not necessarily to decide whether there was a sexual assault or not uh, in the uh, incident involving uh, Ms. McCandless and John Hansen. Um, so now I'd like to give counsel an opportunity to put on the record anything they would like to say about that sidebar and that statement. Uh, Mr. Nelson? No, thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Dufour? Nothing, Your Honor. Okay, all right then, uh, counsel, we will uh, then adjourn for lunch. We'll give you a one hour, but basically what we'll, plan is we'll reconvene at 1.15. I just ask that you be ready for the jury to come in at 1.15. Okay. And uh, Mr. Nelson, how long do you plan to go? I know you have your witness here, so. Dr. Tovar is here. Um, God, I hope I'm done by two. If okay. we start at 1.15, I hope I'd be done by two, if not sooner. All right, Mr. DeFore, does the state have any, or Ms. Nodoff, or Mr. Hahn, any additional? No, this will be the last witness we intend to call, Your Honor. All right, so um, very well. Uh, so we're not, we wouldn't be taking Dr. Tovar out of order, basically, you anticipate. Did you want to take a look then at, at the exhibits to see, you know, whether there's any question in your mind that exhibits have been received or not? We will do that, Your Honor. Okay, and very I good. Apologize, I, you know, I understand time is of the essence and the defense would have no objection to saying the state can do that as long as it's done by the close of business today if they want to do that sometime you know today when we're finished with witnesses rather than over the short period we'll just, either we'll way. try to look over lunch and uh, we can just do we have the current witness li or exhibit list through at least the ones today because I think there were only a couple today and I know I moved them all can I have an exhibit list Sure. Can't guarantee it's pretty, but... What's that? I can't guarantee you it's pretty. <laughs> I don't care if it's pretty. <laughs> Could we get All right. a copy of that, too, if you may? I, I think we have a pretty good record, though, of what's been offered and received. Okay, and we'll be in recess. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Continue your cross. Thank you. Mr. Brock, I believe when we last left off, I was asking questions about uh, Ezra's statements to you regarding... Alex Woodworth both on March 1st and March 23rd remember that yes um, so I want to ask you more questions about her statements to you on March 23rd okay that's the first time that you met with her regarding the investigation of uh, her arrival at uh, farmer Sipple's house correct uh, March 23rd is when she arrived at Mr. Sipple's house, yes. She actually arrived there. On 22nd, 22nd. correct. Yep. 23rd was the first time you spoke with her about what may or may not have happened on the 22nd, the day before. Agreed? Correct. Okay. Um, and on exhibit 290, you have that there in front of you. That's been admitted. Can I? She told you... Um, at some point, again, we talked about how she was talking about her feelings, and I'm not going to go through that again, but how, how she talked about how she was scared, right? Yes. And then she also was telling you about her feelings regarding what she uh, says Alex, her feelings about Alex or what she thought Alex was doing or feeling. Is that right? Yes. Uh, um, and on page 14... Sorry, actually, the other one. You have the first one. Yep. That's the 23rd. This is the 24th. Yes, so exhibit 176 on page 14. Can I have the screen, please? It's been previously offered and received. 
uh, is where she starts talking to you on line 597 where she says to you, I just remember being really scared and being in pain. Can you see that? I can. Maybe that's better for my old eyes at least. And then you asked her, what were you scared of? Is that right? That is correct. And she told you she was essentially scared of being hurt. That is correct. Uh, and you said by who or what? Agreed? That is correct. She said Alex. That is correct. That's the Alex that she had been referring to you about before that we'd heard in the tape that we played before the break, correct? That is correct. Um, and then you asked, by him doing what? And she responded, by him like harming me and making me want to do something he wanted. Agreed? Agreed. Um, and you said then, follow-up question, what do you mean by that? And she said... He's just, he's been upset, upset at me a couple of times when I would go over because I was kind of seeing Alex for a little while because I was very confused and he would kind of get upset when I was too sensitive or in pain and stuff during those interactions. That's what she said to you on the 23rd, correct? Correct. And she previously told you on the 21st that, uh, I want to make sure I get it correct, it hurt. Something along those lines, or I'm sorry, she previously told you on March 1st, it hurt in reference to sex with Alex. I don't remember exactly what it was in reference to, but she said it hurt. Okay. She also, sorry, I'll take that down. Let me go through just some other Thank you. times in the 23rd when she talks to you. She talks about her feelings and she tells you about Alex, what she thought Alex was feeling as well, correct? What she perceived Alex to be feeling. I believe so. She told you, I think it is 11 different times that she thought Alex was upset. Is that right? I believe that is a correct number. We, I provided you with some, some of these listings earlier in the week for you to check the transcript. Is that right? Yes. And you had a chance to check that transcript? Yes. And it was 11 times that she had said that about Alex during that interview on the 23rd, right? Correct. And um, I'm just going to show you my sheet as if, uh, just to be open with you here. Um, my tally is eight of those times she was talking about the present occasion and three of those times she was talking about past occasions when Alex was upset. Does that sound about right? I know you're not double checking my work exactly, but again, in general, does that sound about right? In general. But what we do know now that listening to the tapes is while well, she told you her feelings and what Alex was doing she didn't tell you where the car was did she no she did not tell me where the vehicle was um, or and she didn't tell you where Alex was did she she did not tell me where Alex was but then you came back and spoke with her the next day on the 24th right that is correct and uh, eventually she tells you more information agreed she does and then you come to learn that the reason she didn't tell you the stuff before was, as she says, because it was too scary. That's her words to you, right? That is correct. Uh, so on the 23rd, she's there. She cooperates with you. She talks to me, yes. She stayed in the room, right? Yes. She answered your questions. That is correct. Um... She signed the release. Yes, she did. Uh, she had previously, back on March 1st, given you her iPod. That is correct. Um, you knew on March 23rd that law enforcement already had her iPod a second time. Agreed? I don't think I knew that on March 23rd. Okay. You've now come to learn that on 
March 22nd, the police recovered her iPod, correct? Correct. I didn't know it at March 23rd, but on March 24th, I did know that so Don County had taken possession of that. The bottom line is she couldn't give it to you on the 23rd because she'd already given it to the police before. Agreed? The police collected it, yes. All right. Um, she'd offered up her Google account information when she was speaking with you on the 23rd? Yes, she did. So you didn't actually collect it until the next day on the 24th. Agreed? Agreed. <coughs> But what she didn't do is she didn't tell you about what happened between the time she left Alex's until she got to Don Sipples when she spoke with you on the 23rd. Correct. Now, you're, um, you're aware that victims of sexual abuse or domestic abuse may be traumatized. Agreed? Agreed. That they may be confused. Agreed? Agreed. That uh, the trauma from being a victim may even affect that victim's behavior. Agreed? Yes. Um, and in fact, you're aware that even secondhand exposure to trauma, like as a law enforcement officer, exposure to other people's trauma could be stressful and require help for that police officer or other person. Objection Agreed? relevance. Sustained. Can we approach on the side, Judge? All right, go ahead. Sidebar. All right, objection is sustained. have some training, uh, I believe is how you've previously said, in how to speak with victims of trauma. Is that right? Yes. Um, but you don't have in-depth understanding of the neurobiology of trauma. Agreed? I do not. You have not had specific training regarding trauma. Agreed? In what sense? Well, have you gone to, well, let me ask you this. You're a member of the Eau Claire Police Department, right? That is correct. You're in a detective, I believe, is the, the there's investigators and detectives. Is it detectives is the term that the Eau Claire uses? That is correct. Are there investigators in Eau Claire? Uh, there is a patrol investigator. Okay. But what may be another context thought of as an investigator is in, in your department called a detective, right? That is correct. Uh, and I imagine there's a uh, detective sometimes are assigned to particular crimes. Agreed? Agreed. So like in the Eau Claire Police Department, you probably have a detective that is specifically assigned to investigating child sex assault cases, right? Agreed. And part of the reason that there is a separate particular person to do that is there's specific training that that detective has. Agreed? They do have some different training, yes. <laughs> some different training than you have, correct? Yes. Some training on how in particular to interview children victims of traction relevance. Agreed? Can sustain for the same reason. So you don't have any particular training on how to deal with tra trauma victims, do you? Well, you have general training, we understand that. I want to know if you have a specific, specialized training that you have attended. Well, I attended a crisis intervention training. Okay. and. Uh, that was back in 2014? I don't remember the exact year it was, but I've continued to be part of the program. Okay. And is, um, are you, do you know who Miriam Falk is? Miriam Falk? Yes. I'm sorry, I do not. You don't, the Wisconsin Department of Justice attorney who does trainings for police in Wisconsin about trauma and how it impacts trauma victims? I do not. Okay. Were, did you attend, uh, do you know who Dr. James Hopper is? Not until this case. You've since learned about him from this case, correct? That is correct. Did you attend his training that he put on for police officers and prosecutors in Racine, Wisconsin this year, and, or last year in 2018? I did not. Okay. Um, other than the, what you've called the crisis intervention training, do you have anything in particular, any other specialized training in dealing with trauma? 
other than experience and just in general in work. But I'm asking about training, not experience, right? Other than that, no. Okay. Because there's a difference between experience and training. You agree, correct? Huh. Sure. Yeah. There is. Yeah. Somebody could have lots of experience, but if they don't, I'm not implying this on you. I just this is general. But if they're not doing it correctly, the fact that they just keep doing it over and over and over doesn't make their experience any more valuable. You'd agree with that, correct? Correct. So, but training is a large part of that. Agreed. A large, large part of a large part of making sure that somebody is successful, and when they go out and they collect their experiences and doing the job that they're signed up to do. If it's good training, yes. Okay. So the training uh, that you have uh, based on trauma, would you agree? Let me ask you this then. I guess. Would you agree that if you do, you have any? I'm going to back up a second. Do you have any training regarding forensic experiential trauma interviews? No. Okay. And have you heard the acronym FETI, F-E-T-I, for Forensic Experiential Trauma, trauma Interviews before? No. Okay. Um, would you agree uh, that you have any training on using a trauma-informed interview approach? Other than the crisis intervention, did they use a specific methodology called trauma-informed interview approach? I don't remember. Okay. Um, did you, when you went to this crisis intervention, did you learn a new methodology in dealing with trauma, or did you learn some helpful techniques in how to interview people? There was a lot of techniques. Okay, but it wasn't necessarily an entire different methodology than what you've already been doing. Agreed? Agreed. All right. Do you know that, uh, are you familiar with the, uh, Well, I'm just going to leave it at that. All right. Um, so, when you met with her on the 23rd, fair to say that you didn't tell her that she had a choice to meet with you on that day. Agreed? I would disagree on that. Okay. Um, where in the interview does it say that you gave her a choice? Mm -hmm. On the 23rd, not the 24th. I understand things changed on the 24th. Mm -hmm. It was done before we even made contact with her, based on the unit at okay, Mayo. I'm not, I'm not asking about other people, sir. I'm asking about your contact with her, okay? Mm -hmm. You had contact with her on the 23rd, correct? That is correct. All of the contact that you had with this person here, Ezra McCandless, was on the recording that we heard, correct? I guess it, I, I can't answer that completely with a yes or no. There's an explanation to it. I'm, there's facts, and I'm asking you, you're a police officer, correct? That is correct. You're here to give facts, right? That is correct. And the facts that you normally have are observations that you make with your eyes, right? Correct. Things you hear, agree? Correct. Things that you smell. Correct. Things that you touch. Correct. And things that you taste. Correct. It's basically the five senses, correct? Correct. You go out and collect information, correct? Correct. And then you bring it to a to either a, a boss in your office or a prosecutor in the in the in the state or to a jury in a trial or to a judge in a case. Agreed? Agreed. You go out, gather facts, and bring them here to tell us the facts, right? Correct. You're not an opinion witness, agreed? No. You, 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 no. I okay. Do you agree that you're not here to give opinions? <coughs> Correct. Okay. So you agree that you're not an opinion witness in that sense. Agreed? Correct. So I want to ask you some facts about March 23rd. Okay. The conversations that you had with Ezra McCandless, when you spoke with her, it was all on that recording. Agreed? Yes. When you had uh, and everything on that recording is in the transcript that's been marked as exhibit number 176. Agreed? Agreed. So you would agree that 
in the transcript and on the recording, at no time do you say the words to Ezra, Ezra McCandless, giving her a choice to be there or not to be there. Agreed? Agreed. And at no time during there do you tell her that she can wait and talk sometime in the future. Agreed. At no time do you tell her that she doesn't need to answer your questions. Agreed? Agreed she was a victim at this point. Again, I appreciate that you want to explain why you didn't do things, but I'm just asking you facts right now. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so you agree you did not tell her that she didn't have to answer questions. Agreed? Agreed. Um, you were here when Mr. Vang uh, testified, right? Yes. You watched the video uh, of a portion of Mr. Vang's interview of Ms. McCandless in court here, correct? Correct. You heard Mr. Vang give her options of not having to speak, correct? Correct. Not answering questions, correct? Correct. Of leaving at any time, correct? Correct. And certainly back on February 26, when Mr. Vang met with Ms. McCandless about this other matter, she wasn't a suspect then, agreed? That is correct. She was a victim then, correct? Correct. So now back to you on March 23rd, when you talked with her, you just to kind of sum up, I can't remember where I left off in here. You, you didn't tell her she could leave. You didn't tell her she couldn't, she could refuse to answer questions. You didn't tell her she could wait and talk later. You didn't tell her she had a choice. Agreed? Correct. Okay. Um, yet she cooperated with you, right? Correct. Okay. After you met with uh, Ms. McCandless on the 23rd, you went back and that's when you found a car and you found Mr. Woodworth in the back of the car. Is that right? Yes. All right. So then the next day on the 24th, you then come back and you speak with Ms. McCandless again, right? Mm, that is correct. And at that point, fair to say that Things had changed, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> there was now a death investigation that was going on. Agreed? Agreed. Okay. You were wanting to find out what happened that led to Mr. Woodworth being in the backseat of that car deceased, right? Correct. When you first met with her on the 24th, you then told her some things you hadn't told her on the 23rd. Agreed? Agreed. Yeah, you told her she could leave when you spoke with her on the 24th, right? Again, I think that's a general comment, but we can yep. get to the particular if you want. I think... No, nope. no, that's fine. I, I agree. I told her that she'd be able to leave anytime she would like. Yeah. Um, I think what you said is uh, you're in a locked facility for your safety to get you the help we both think you need, but that door, it's not locked, we'll end it, we'll walk out. Correct? <coughs> I apologize, that's lines 17, 18, and 19 on page one. That is correct. Okay. Um, when you first talked with her that time, you didn't immediately tell her about your findings, did you? No. You spoke with her for, again, it's a, I, I'm going off my memory, so correct me if I'm wrong, about 45 minutes or so before you told her about your finding of the car. Agreed? Agreed. All right. And when you uh, first did that, I think how you would mentioned it is... You used the word... So we honestly, on line 1705, uh, you'd taken a break. You said, excuse me for a second on page 38. Thank you. I believe the words you said. So we honestly went out and found Don. Is that right? 1705. Yes. You'd chosen to use the word at that point, 45 minutes into the conversation, the word honestly, right? I guess so. You hadn't 
I'm not saying you were deceived her. I don't mean to imply that in any way. But you hadn't shared with her everything you knew when you first met with her that day, right? No. Okay. Um, and then when you met with her on the 24th, she continued to tell you, at least in that first 45 minutes, that framework there, basically uh, she didn't remember, just like she had the day before. Agreed? Correct. This is broad strokes. I understand okay. that we have this. We're talking very broad strokes. Are you with me? Okay. Um, what you talked to her about in that first 45 minutes that you hadn't talked to her about before is the word boy in her arm, right? Uh, can you repeat that? Yeah. What you talked to her about on the 24th yep. that you hadn't talked to her about on the 23rd is the word boy written in her arm. Correct. It came up on the 24th. Yeah. You didn't ask her about that the day before. For whatever reason, you didn't ask her about that, right? No. You then asked her about it on the 24th. Is that right? That is correct. Um, and that's when she um, told you what later in the interview you turned out to be, uh, you realized was a lie, but she told you that Alex had done that, right? That is correct. And then she later, by the end of that interview, after you, for lack of a better term, maybe confronted her, um, she told you, yes, she had done boy on her own arm. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. Um, when you spoke with her about finding the car, I just want to make sure we get this right. doesn't take long after you're telling her that you found the car where she says, yep, I was scared. And again, broad strokes. I stabbed Alex, right? I couldn't tell you a time on how long it was. Sure. On page 39 at line 1754 and 1758, probably very soon after she said to you, I remember being really scared and a lot of pain on those two lines. Is that right? That is correct. And then at the bottom of that page is when you're like, what happened to Alex, right? Yes, I did ask her what happened to Alex. Yeah, and I think you would at that point kind of, tell me if I'm wrong, but it, it is kind of in a soft confrontational mode, right? You're kind of like, look, Ezra, we've talked to you. What happened to Alex? I think it was more of just trying to figure out what happened. I wasn't trying to confront anybody. Okay. And that's fair. Just trying to get facts. And that's fair. Um, and that's what you were doing. You were trying to get facts, right? Correct. Because previously she hadn't given you facts, right? That is correct. She said, I don't remember. That is correct. And then once you told her about that, she started to give you the facts about what she says happened, right? She gave us... I she guess, Your Honor, I'm going to object to the characterization of it as being facts. She started to tell him what she claims happened, but to say they're facts, I think, is a mischaracterization. Well, just saying, it, it seems a bit argumentative, Mr. Okay. Nelson. When I mean the word facts, I'm not saying that they're, that whether the, those are facts that are truthful or not is up, for, up to the jury to decide. We all agree on that. Are you with me? The jury will decide, yes. Okay. And so I mean it more in the sense of she's telling you what happened, what she saw, what she heard, what she smelled, what she tasted, what she felt back on that muddy road. I don't mean to imply whether they're true or not. Okay? Okay. And so I just I want to be fair to everybody. It's just a simpler way you would use the word fact for us to talk about this. Does that make sense? Okay. And in response to that, she told you right away on page 40, the top line, I got him off me, right? That is correct. And then her next words were, it was just really painful. Is that right? That is correct. And then from there, she kind of starts sharing more and more and more over the next half hour with you about what happened. Yes, yeah, she told me her story. Um, and while she's telling you her story, you're, uh, you're trying to gather facts, right? Trying to gather, gather information on what had took place. Correct. Um, you're asking questions, she's giving answers, right? Yes. It's not a free-flowing narrative that Ezra McCandless is just providing to you, right? She's answering your questions. Yes. 
You're not at, uh, for, and again, I don't mean this to imply critical, I'm just trying to get the facts. You didn't ask, like, tell me in your own words everything that happened, just a big open book, did you? I don't think I used those words, no. You were, you were uh, yeah, not, I don't mean in a critical sense, but you were asking specific questions, looking for specific answers, is that right? Oh, well, I asked what happened, Yep. and what happened next. And then when she would tell you things, you'd follow up with questions, is that right? To get more detail and more information. Sure. Um, are you aware through your training that uh, somebody that who suffered from a traumatic event sometimes doesn't have all of those details? I believe that, yes. Are you aware in your training that somebody who suffered from a traumatic event sometimes doesn't remember the sequencing of events? I believe I've heard that before, yes. Okay. Um, in much of your, not much, some of your questioning, now I'm switching to that last half hour on the 24th, okay? Okay. And so in that last half hour, you were asking your questions about sequencing of events. Would you agree? Yes. All right. Um, and sometimes when she was giving you answers about that, she would preface it with the, word, the phrase, I think. Do you remember that? I don't. My transcript is all out of order, so I apologize. I'm going to put it in order. Page um, 45 on line 2020. You started asking her about where she ended up stabbing. Is that right? Yes, I asked her where she, if she remembered where she stabbed him. And her initial answer to you was, I don't really fully know because it was just anything and any, everywhere. Is that right? That is correct. And then you asked some more follow-up questions, is that right? And on line 2028, she responded, I don't know. Agreed? Um, on line 2028, she says the words, I don't know. You agree? Correct. I'm just trying to read what that's following up to. And then if we, um, you're asking some questions, I think, again, broad strokes, 46 through 47 about kind of where this occurred. Was it in the back seat? Was it outside? Um, and then on page 47 at line 2119, you asked, how did he get back inside the car? Is that right? You said 2119? Yes. Twenty-one seventeen is where I have him. At, we're asking that. Twenty-one nineteen. Her response is, yep. "I don't know." Agreed. Correct. And then you followed up with, uh, "Where do you think you stabbed him?" Is that right? Correct. And then her next words are, "I think." Agreed. Correct. And then on twenty-one twenty-nine, she says, "I think." Agreed. Correct. And then on 2139, she says, I think. Agreed? Correct. And on 2148, she says, I think. Agreed? Correct. And on 2156, she says, I think. Agreed? Correct. And on 2156, she, uh, did I just do that one? I'm going to move on because I think I did. On 2165, she says, I might have. Agreed? Correct. And then 2169, she says, I think so. Agreed? Correct. 2183, I think. Agreed? Correct. 2188, I think. Agreed? Correct. And again, if you go to the next page on 49, I don't want to say every time, but she starts most all of her sentences with the phrase, I think. Is that fair? 
That is fair. And then it continues on to again on page 50 where she says it again, one, two, three, four times, at least on that page. Is that right? That is correct. And then on 2290, um, you'd asked, do you remember when you stabbed him in the throat? And she says, uh, 2290, no, I don't. I just remember it happening, but I don't remember the time or when. Is that right? Oh, sorry, uh, I have sep this game separated. You said, what was it? It's all right. 2290, uh, you said? 2290, her okay. response, you, you had previously asked her a question, do you remember when you stabbed him in the throat? And her response was, no, I don't. I just remember it happening, but I don't remember the time or when. Agreed? Agreed. And then, on page 56, actually I want to, sorry, that's a different chapter. On page 61 at line 2763. Actually, let's start at 2753. Is that right? 2753 on page 61? Yes. Okay. She says the words to you, I didn't want to have sex at all. Is that right? Correct. And then you asked her, did he? To which she responded, I don't think so. Is that right? Correct. And then you asked, why did he have the knife, and why, and to cut your pants, question mark, to which she says, I think he just wanted to look at me. Agreed? Correct. And then you follow up, is that what he said, or why? You said you think. Is that right? Correct. So you follow up on page 61, when she starts using the phrase, I think, you followed up with the, basically, why do you keep saying I think? Is that right? For that question, yes. Yeah, for that question, correct? You hadn't done it for all of her previous I thinks, but on that page you followed up with the, again, broad strokes, what, why are you saying I think? It fit that question, yes. Okay. And so I know you said it then, and my second question now is, you didn't ask that follow-up question to any of her previous I think statements, did you? No. And when you asked a follow-up question, about that I think statement, her response to you is, I don't know. Is that right? Correct. Um, but you never asked follow-up, you, you don't know what she would have said if you'd asked follow-up questions to her previous I think statements, do you? Because that would be speculation, right? Correct. Okay. Um, you just taking a step back from that particular interview, okay? Okay. But on the 23rd and the 24th, she both days gave you information leading up to this time gap that I think I've referenced before after Alex's house. Is that right? That is correct. And on both of those days, she said basically, again, broad strokes, the same stuff, right? I did not go and compare both stories side by side. But again, broad strokes, basically the same thing, right? For the most part. There are and some things a little different, I'm sure, but I can't. Sure. And as part of this case, you're like the lead investigator, right? I was assisting Dunn County. Okay. Um, have you heard from a lead investigator in the case thus far when we've been here in court? I guess not. Okay. And you're the, you're the officer... Uh, that's been here in court the whole time, right? That is correct. No other law enforcement officer who's been uh, involved in the case has been in here the whole time, right? That is correct. So fair to say, whether it's official or not, you're kind of the lead investigator, right? If you want to say that, then sure. Certainly the most involved, right? I was involved, yes. Okay. Um, and what you've learned through that investigation and watching the trial is most of that, what she says happens on the morning of the 22nd, that's corroborated, right? Yes. Okay. Um, 
And then you also asked her questions about what happened afterwards. Both on the 23rd and the 24th, you asked her not as much, but you were asking her about Farmer Sipple's house, about the, what happened at the hospital. You were asking her some questions about that as well, right? Correct. And what you found out through your investigation is what she said about what happened afterwards at Don Sipple's and with the police and at the hospital, that was again, corroborated, right? As far as, I guess I'm, you kind of lost me there on sure. what you're wondering or what you're asking, I should say. I'm, I'm asking if in your investigation, you would agree that what she told you on the 23rd and the 24th about what happened af uh, on the 22nd after she got to Don Sipple's house, whether your investigation corroborated what she said. I think most of the facts were the same. Yeah. I and again, I never compared them side by side. I understand that, sir. Um, but that's part of your job as an investigator is you get information and you go and you check it out, right? We follow all the evidence, yes. We right. follow the evidence to where it takes us. Correct. Because um, what one of the concerns is, is of course, you've heard of the term bias. Is that right? Yes. You were here in court, I think, when the judge even mentioned it in part of the first day is, you know, explicit as well as implicit bias, right? Yes, I believe it and is. I imagine you probably have some training that they do for just professionals to make sure that you're aware of implicit bias, is that right? We have bias-based policing training, yes. Yeah. Whether it's bias for, and again, I'm not, not implying that it's an event, it's, a, it's an issue in this case, but you have training for bias regarding race, right? Correct. You have training for bias regarding gender bias, right? Correct. Okay. And you've probably also even had training, uh, or at least you're aware of the concept of confirmation bias, right? Can you expand on that, please? Sure. Let me. Um, have you heard the? I mean, do you have you heard the phrase confirmation bias before? I can't think of it off the top of my head. Okay. Um, if I, so confirmation bias is when a person looks for va facts to validate a conclusion that he or she has already reached. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. Um, or uh, they avoid or discredit evidence that challenges their preconceived idea. That's the other side of the coin on confirmation bias, right? Okay. Um, I imagine you've had, even if you don't know the term, you're aware of the concept, you've had yes. some talk about it, right? Yes. And that certainly, as you said, something you want to avoid as a law enforcement officer, right? That is correct. Probably want to avoid as a human being in general, but it happens to all of us, right? Okay. Uh, I mean, would you agree with that? That's just one of the reasons we know about it is, is it's a common concept that human beings sometimes have confirmation bias. I don't know how common it is. Okay. Um, but whether it applies to all human beings in every uh, employment opportunity or just in life, you would agree it certainly is something that should be avoided in law enforcement, right? Objection asked and answered. I don't think that was specifically asked. Not overruled. Yes, it should be avoided. Okay. Um, so, as you had said, I think it was that you wanted to investigate all matters, all leads, right? I followed the evidence that I had. Sure. And you had evidence that you gave her that she should go to get this crisis intervention at the uh, treatment places, right? At Bolton House, correct? I'm kind of... On March 1st, you spoke with her. Correct. And on March 1st, when you spoke with her, you gave her information to say... Objection asked and answered. He's not following me. I'm trying to put it into context, Judge. All right, I'll still. overrule. Go ahead. And on March 1st, you gave her that information about resources available to victims of assault. I okay. took her up to the victim witness area, yes. And then you reviewed the evidence in this case where you saw all of the pamphlets that she had been provided before from Mr. Vang, right? I didn't see those until later on in this case. Okay. You certainly were aware through your investigation that she'd been talking about going to therapy and that's why she was writing these journals, right? I didn't know that until after this, these interviews and everything had taken place. I understand that. And those interviews that take place were over 18 months ago, correct? 
That is correct. And so in those 18 months since you've learned of that information, fair to say that you've never done any investigation whatsoever about whether she did get that treatment and counseling that she talked about. Objection, relevance. Sustained. Can we approach, Judge? Objection, sustained. Ms. McCandless on the 23rd and the 24th, you'd also been getting other information about the case from other officers that were involved. Is that right? I guess just in general, not while you were actually speaking, but you know, prior to speaking with her, you were getting updates from other officers, right? There were some updates, yes. Yeah. And you came to learn that on the 22nd, when she was initially at Farmer Sipples and had her initial contact with police, that she had used the name Monica Carlin. Is that right? Yes. And you also know from her statements that she told you, I believe it was both on the 23rd as well as on the 24th, where she talks about prior in, uh, accidents in her car. Is that right? That is correct. And so did you do any investigation about those prior accidents that she had had in a car and how that may or may not have affected her ability to talk about that event? No. She had told you that it was a traumatic event, right? Maybe not using those terms, but fair to say that she told you about it was a big deal. She didn't use the word traumatic. Um, she, de she didn't mention them. Okay. And she said she would remember them. Okay. Um, did you do any follow-up with uh, Ms. McCandless's mother about those accidents? No. Did you do any follow-up with Ms. McCandless's father, Joe Shane Carlin, about those accidents? No. Did you do any follow-up uh, with uh, Ms. McCandless's former boyfriend, Jason Mengel, regarding those accidents? I think we talked once about some of the accidents, but I don't remember exactly. Okay. Did you do any follow-up with any witness to determine if she had ever been in a previous situation where she would used the word, uh, identified herself as Monica Carlin after she had legally changed her name to Ezra Objection McCann's? relevance. It goes to, again, just, I'm not asking. Right, I'm gonna let you ask a couple questions on that. Overrule the objection. It's brief. I appreciate that, Judge. Do you understand the question? Can you repeat it, please? Sure. Did you do any investigation to determine if Ezra McCandless had ever previously identified herself as Monica Carlin after she had legally changed her name to Ezra McCandless? No. Did you do any investigation to determine if she'd ever been in a situation where she'd been disorientated or lacked a memory of a particular event? Objection, relevance. Just I'm going to over, overrule, but go ahead, answer. I don't know how I would do an investigation of that without being told about an incident. Okay. Um, so the answer, it sounds like to my question is no, you didn't. No. Correct? Um, and your claim was the reason that you didn't is you were never told about it by anybody? I have, I just can't make something up out of the air. I understand that, but Jason Mengel told you about it. Told me about what? A time in which she had been in an accident before and didn't remember her name and call herself Monica Carlin. Okay. I think you did, yes. Okay. So your answer that you didn't do it because you didn't know about it, maybe you didn't have a memory about it, but you did know about it, right? At some point he might have mentioned it, yes. So you did know about it, agreed? Agreed. And when you found out about it, you didn't do any investigation at all about that, did you? No. Just very briefly, Exhibit 691, 
That was the uh, iPod extraction regarding the note from March 2nd, 2018. Do you recall that? Yes. Um, that is, again, a note that was found on Ms. McCandless's iPod. Is that right? Correct. You would agree that you have no way of there's no information as to whether that note was ever sent to anybody. Agreed? Agreed. And you have no information as to whether that note was ever received by anybody. Agreed? Agreed. Um, and whether anybody thinks it's to Jason or to Alex or to John or to some other person, you didn't do any follow-up investigation with any of those, with, with John or Jason, to see if that note was written to them. They received by them. Agreed? Agreed. Same uh, in the note um, from March 2nd was about Ms. McCandless asking somebody that they stop discussing her case. Correct? Correct. And in there, there's also something, or what happened with Alex. Is that right? That is correct. And it, we know from being in here in court that there's two different Alexes, right? Yes. There's an Alex Zink and an Alex Woodworth, right? Correct. Um, and if, I'm not saying it was, we don't know, but if uh, Alex Zink used to live with Jason Mango, right? That is correct. Okay. And so whether... If this were a note with an intention to be to Jason, you don't know whether it was to mentioning his roommate, Alex, or Alex Woodworth. Agreed? And there is no last name. Correct. Because you didn't follow up on that in any way with Mr. Zink either, did you? I don't think he would know if it was about him. Well, you could ask him if there was any incident in uh, around March 2nd, 2018, or the day before, uh, in which he, there's a reason he'd be mentioned in a note, correct? Possibly. Yeah. I mean, you, could, you do what sometimes investigators do. They go and talk to people, right? Possibly, yeah. Um, and then on Exhibit 692, um, that's the note from March 20th of 2018. Is that right? Yes, it is. And again, um, you're not aware of any evidence as to electronically or otherwise as to whether this note was ever sent to anybody, right? Correct. And again, you're not aware of any evidence as to whether this was ever received by anybody, correct? Correct. Or read or shown in some way that wouldn't be electronic, but just even on the face of a phone, agreed? Correct. Or a face of an iPod, agreed? Agreed. All right. Those are the only questions, thank you. Any Yes, Your Honor. Thank Go ahead. You. I want to start, I think, with some of the questions that uh, related to the investigation and your work. First off, uh, whose investigation was this, Dunn County's or the City of Eau Claire's? Dunn County's. All right. And uh, were other investigators from both Dunn County and Eau Claire County doing things over and above what you were doing? Yes, they were. Did you do everything on this investigation? No one person could do everything on this one this investigation. So you weren't the only investigator involved in this? That is correct. Were many of the things that counsel asked about followed <coughs> up by other investigators? Yes, they were. Vague. He wants to ask about specific things, but to just say many of the things I think is too vague. Overall. And there were some questions about uh, exhibit, I think it's uh, 691 maybe, the one uh, with the uh, journal entry, or note, I should say. The note from March 2nd? Yes. Yes, 691. Are you aware of anything through your review of the investigation in this case that happened between the defendant and Alex Zink? His name has never come up other than a roommate. Do you still have exhibits 176 and 290 there? Those are the two transcripts. 
Yes, I do. All right. Uh, so turn to page uh, three of Exhibit 176 for a moment. Council asked you some questions about uh, line 121, uh, where the defendant uh, makes the statement uh, that she needed to return some stuff that makes her sad. Do you recall those questions? Yes. All right. Uh, and could you uh, take now Exhibit 290, turn to page 3 of Exhibit 290. Okay. And can you go uh, to, starting at line 115, can you read through uh, line, actually starting at line 113 and then read through line 125 out loud, please. Sure. 113. Yes. I ask, what kind of stuff were you bringing? Uh, Ezra resp responds, um, a heating pad. I say, okay. Ezra says, and I was, I had like a few just like small things, like a bookmark and stuff like that. And then 122, I say, okay, who was the heating pad for? And Ezra responds, for Alex, because he gave it to me a while ago. I just didn't want it anymore because I didn't need it. So in that interview, she says she didn't need it versus it made her sad. Correct? Correct. Uh, do you still have exhibit 465 up there? Which one is that? I'm sorry. That is the Instagram uh, contacts. No, I do not. Okay. Oh. No, I do not. Sorry. You mean? Detective Proc, uh, resume, reviewing Exhibit 465, what's the date of those Instagram posts? It appears all of them were March 12th, 2018. All right. And is there a specific reference to what item uh, the defendant is wanting to return to Alex as it relates to those Instagram posts. Uh, just give me a second to make sure I have sure. it correctly, please. I believe it is going to be the book, The Little Prince. <laughs> and are you aware if that book was returned to Alex at any particular location through your investigation into this matter? I believe it was returned to him at Racy's. Right. Now, counsel also asked you if during the interview of March 23rd, uh, the first interview you did with the defendant in regard to uh, the matter that we're here for today, uh, if what she told you happened before she met Alex, if that was all corroborated uh, by your, for your investigation. Do you recall that question? Yes. Uh, and was all of the information that she gave you on March 23rd as to what she did before she met Alex actually corroborated by the physical facts and the surveillance video? Can you kind of rephrase that well, question? Maybe, maybe if I ask it a little different way, that, that's probably a bad question. Uh, in the interview on March 23rd, where did she tell you she went first when she got to Eau Claire from Stanley? Uh, she went down to Racy's. All right. Was that f statement by the defendant that she went to Racy's first corroborated by the surveillance videos from Milestone? No. Right. What do the surveillance videos from Milestone show about where the defendant went first? in on March 22nd. 
it shows that she went to the area of Alex's house. And was that information corroborated by anything, any other information that you obtained as part of this investigation? No. That she went to Alex's house before she went to Racy's? Well, uh, I believe the roommate, Dave, mentioned that she was over there earlier. She was there twice. Right. Now, the defendant, uh, in her statements to you, uh, and in various other locations said that one of the things that she was trying to do or was doing on uh, March 22nd is she wanted to give Alex Woodworth the journals. Do you recall that? Correct. All right. As part of the investigation was Alex Woodworth's residence, his room, uh, his apartment, his, the house he lived in, was it searched? Uh, I believe it was searched by Dunn County officials, yes. And are you aware if they recovered either journal what's uh, titled Silence Broken or Journal 1 or the other document titled Journal 2 among Alex Woodworth's belongings? They never found that. All right. uh, was a copy of either of those journals found in the defendant's car in the course of the search? No. Did you look through all of Alex Woodward's electronic devices. Yes. Was either journal found among the items in either elect in any of his electronic devices in an electronic format? I did not see it. There was a question uh, about uh, in the uh, interview of March 1st of 2018 that uh, the defendant made a statement about uh, something hurt as it related to the relationship with Alex Woodworth. Do you recall that? I do. Did she ever make it clear in that that uh, it was a physical versus an emotional hurt? I don't remember. All right. In the interview on March 23rd, did the defendant ever tell you that Alex physically harmed her or assaulted her? Objection bag. Just time period, I guess. Is he talking about March 22nd or prior time or all time? On, he, on March 23rd. I, I, I did say March 23rd. I accept that, Your Honor. I'll... I'll no, you I'll did ask the question. That was asked in the question. March 23rd. In the interview of March 23rd, did the defendant ever say that Alex Woodworth, on in the interview of March 23rd, did she ever say that on March 22nd, Alex Woodworth physically assaulted her? I don't believe she did. May I approach, Your Honor? May. Detective Brock, I'm showing you what has been marked for identification as Exhibit 426, uh, which is a, appears to be a transcript of the interview uh, between yourself and the defendant on uh, March 1st. Is that correct? That does appear to be. All right. I want you to take a look on page 19 of that, and I just want you to review page 19, and then I want to ask if that refreshes your recollection as to whether or not she said, described it, uh, and described it as a physical, emotional hurt, or she didn't really say. Okay. Can we, can I, sorry, can we approach for a second? All right. Does that ref, refresh your recollection as to whether or not she tells you if it's a physical or an emotional hurt. She doesn't say either.
And during that interview, she talked many times about emotional hurts, didn't she? I believe so, yes. Council had asked you uh, and, and tried to and, and asked you a yes or no if the defendant was advised that she had to talk to you on March 23rd. Do you recall that? Yes. And you said you can't answer that yes or no. Do you recall that? Yes. Why is that? Uh, that's based on the place she was located. They have a policy that if objection hearsay. Well, Your Honor, it's going to explain. Matter, what do you say? Well, <clears throat> frankly, uh, Mr. Nelson, you opened the door, so I'm going to allow the state to go into that. I don't, uh, so I'm not going to elaborate. You can do that uh, aside or some other point, but I'm going to allow the state to go into that. <coughs> Continue. Uh, where she was at, if the patient doesn't want to talk to someone, they're not going to let you talk to them. So for me to be able to talk to Ezra, I had to go through the nursing staff to get, they would go ask Ezra if Ezra would want to talk to me. And if she did, then I got to talk to her. If she didn't, I wasn't going to be able to talk to her. So that's how that took place. So, All right. Now, uh, counsel asked if the defendant uh, cooperated with you on March 23rd in your interview. Do you recall that? Yes. Did she completely cooperate with you on March 23rd? I guess it depends on what you're talking about with cooperate. Right. Well, did she tell you, uh, let me ask this, did she tell you anything about what happened after she left Alex's apartment? No. All right. On March 24th, uh, prior to your telling her that you found the car, did she tell you anything about what happened after she left Alex's apartment on March 22nd? No. After you told her that she, you had found the car, was she able to give you significant details of what happened according to her after she left Alex's apartment on March 22nd? Yes. So based on that, uh, detective, would you say that she completely cooperated with you on March 23rd, 2018? No. I want to talk about a few things uh, that counsel asked you for uh, when she said answered things like I think and, and I don't remember, okay? Okay. Uh, let's start on page 40. Uh, counsel referred you to line 1781. Is this an Exhibit 290? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. This is Exhibit 290. Okay, page 40. All right. Uh, this is on page 40, line yep. 1781. Actually, this one isn't about I think, but counsel says uh, said... Uh, his question was, the defendant said, it was just really painful. Is that actually what was said there? On line 781? Yes, 1781. 1781, it's just really painful. It's just it's, really painful. IT apostrophe yes, just really painful. Not it was. It's IT apostrophe yes. All right. Which is short for it is. Correct. Let's turn to uh, page 45. Now we're at line 2028. Okay. Are you there? Yes, sir. All right. First off, why don't you, can you read the question before and then read the whole answer, not just the I don't know. Okay. Uh, it starts at 2024 and I ask, okay. Anything and everywhere is where you were stabbing him. So was he on top of you? So you have it here. Do you know if you stabbed him in the back or any place? And um, in line 20, 28, she responds, I don't know if I had it facing up or down. Okay. 
And let's turn to page 47, line 2119. Council, you, the question that you had asked and council asked about this is, how did you get back in the site, inside the car, Ezra? And council had just read the part that says, I don't know. Can you read the rest of that answer? Sure, it's line 2119, and as a response, I don't know when I left, and I ran, he was outside. All right. So her story is that she, had already, that she was gone when he got back in the car. That is her story, yes. Right. Let's uh, continue on, uh, on that page. Uh, Council asked you about a number of uh, questions as to where she says, I think. Can you read what the question is at 2021 that starts out all of those answers that says, I think? Sure. It starts out, okay, and then it's inaudible. When he was stabbed, where do you think you stabbed him? So your question is, where do you think he, you stabbed him? Correct. Turn to page 61. And on page 61, uh, there was, uh, when we uh, look at uh, line 2759, you ask him what, or ask the defendant what? Uh, 2759, I asked, why did he have the knife, and why, and to cut your pants? And then what's her answer? I think he just wanted to look at me. All right. And then you follow up on that, I just think, why, or I think, why did you follow up on that answer that says, I think, and not the other ones? Well, the other ones, I asked her what she thought was, why, where she stabbed Alex, and in this one, she responds to my question with, I think, in a kind of a doubting fashion, not knowing for sure. So I want clarification if she truly knew this or if this was just a thought. In other words, you want to know if, if Alex had said something like that or somehow uh, expressed that that's what he wanted or if it was just what her belief was? That is correct. All right. Now, uh, counsel had asked you about, you know, that you didn't talk to her immediately or tell her immediately the information that you had that the car had been found and Alex was found and he was dead. You recall that? Yes, I do. All right. Uh, why didn't you bring that up with her right away? I just wanted to see without prompting her memory to see if she got anything back, if she could remember anything else that took place. Okay. Did you give her a chance to tell you what she knew? Yes. Did you give her a chance uh, to tell you what she knew before you brought up the fact that you knew where the car was? Yes. Did you give her a lot of chances to do that? I couldn't put a number on it, but I believe there was numerous times that I gave her a chance. And until you did that, was she forthcoming in telling you what happened Objection on March to the, 22nd? Sorry. Objection as to the use of the word forthcoming. He can ask her what she said or didn't say, but I think forthcoming is to me. All right. I'm going to sustain it. He gets too close to uh, this witness giving an opinion. Okay. Thank you. Uh, prior to your bringing that up, did she tell you anything about what happened on March 22nd after she left Alex's? No. At any point in time uh, when she finally 
began to tell you about what happened on March 22nd, did she tell you that the reason that she didn't talk to you about what happened is that she did not remember what happened? No. I don't have any other uh, redirect, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Nelson, recross. Yes, please. Uh, Mr. Proc, I want to ask you about our 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, those three days, okay? Okay. Um, and just kind of a preview here is on about Ms. McCandless's statements, essentially of, I don't remember. Make sense? Okay. Um, Fair to say, um, she said that on the 22nd, agreed? That she said that she didn't remember? Correct. Correct. Fair to say that she said that on the 23rd, correct? Correct. And then fair to say she started to say that on the 24th, but eventually told you stuff, right? Correct. And when she talked to you on the, 20, on the 24th, you asked, why didn't you tell us before? And she says, uh, because because it was too scary. Agreed? I believe there was more to than that in that statement. Is that right if I try to find it? Fine. It's, I, I don't have the transcript. I'm losing that page, but it's page 55, line 2494. I think she tells you because it was too scary. Is that the line? That is because I didn't. Um, I asked her, how come you didn't tell me this yesterday when we talked, Ezra? Her response was because I didn't. It was too, it was, it's too scary. Okay. So you almost made the same mistake I did using the words it's and it was, right? No, it, it was is the words right before it. It oh. was, it's too scary. Okay. Um, so she used both in that one, it was and it is too scary, basically, right? That is what it says in okay. here. And when she made that statement on the 24th, she was talking to you in response to her statements on the 23rd. Correct. I guess you've lost me there. And I, I don't have it in front of me. So no, no, I'm just trying to, can you clarify your you question? You the question, yes, why didn't you tell this to us yesterday, agreed? Yes, and it's in response to everything that took place at the vehicle. But you're on the 24th. Yep. You're asking her a question about why she didn't say things on the 23rd. Correct, agreed? why she didn't tell us this on the 23rd. Correct. And her response as to why she didn't say it on the 23rd, if you follow the logic of, if, if there's logic in that, is that it would be on the 23rd, it was too scary for, too scary, right? It's because I didn't, it was, it's too scary. Correct. But that's in reference to why she didn't say it on the 23rd. That's my point. Okay. Is that, do you agree with that? Correct. Following that line of conversation mm -hmm. tracking? No, I, yes. Okay. Um, and in fact, I think she later on, um, on page 61, on lines uh, 2771. Sorry. I, and I'll just start it at the word everything, but it seems like she's talking about kind of what's going on in her head about what happened is that right and she says everything was just so scary and I don't know what to do about it I don't it's just so scary and I just I can't get anything out of my mind that's what she says on those lines correct yes all right So, and again, I know you're not an expert, and I'm not trying to open that, but it may be that sometimes she didn't remember, and it may be that sometimes she didn't want to talk about it because she was too scared. It depends on the day, right? Based on the information that you have right here, right now. I don't know why she didn't want to talk about it. All I can say is one day she said she didn't remember. The next day she said it was too scary. Okay. <coughs> um, you uh, were asked some questions about um, this hurt, all right?
right? And I don't want to belabor the point too much about Alex and Hurt, but you'd, on March 1st, asked her some questions about who she was having sex with. She said Alex, and she said it hurt. Agreed? There was, I don't remember exactly how that conversation went, but I, there was something along those lines, yes. Okay. Which transcript? Sure. Uh, 426 that you did not talk about the phone from TTT in the March first meeting. Okay. Yep. So again, just because I don't want to, um, on page 19 of the DO, well, not yet offered or received exhibit 426, reference to DOJ 4293. Yep. This is that little transcript of the little clip that we played. Okay. Is that right? Um, does it just refresh your memory to see yep. that? Yep. Okay. Okay. And you'd asked him, you'd again, just to put it in time, you'd asked her who she had sex with, she said Alex, and then something along the lines of, and it hurt. And it's inaudible, and it hurt inaudible. You agree? That is what it says. And on the 23rd, she actually did say she was afraid of being hurt by Alex. That was the page 14 that we put up on the screen before. 23rd, page 4. I apologize, I just have to keep jumping back. It's all right. Part. Exhibit 176. Page 14. I guess you're on armor object. That's beyond the scope of my. Uh, uh, I believe he asked if she ever told. It was asked on redirect. I, my question on. on redirect, hold on. If she ever told Mr. Proc on the 23rd about Alex hurting her. So I'm following up on that. No, I asked if he. Well, have the question right. answered. Don't have any. Again, I don't remember exactly, so I'm going <laughs> to overrule the objection, but uh, Mr. Nelson... Uh, it's very brief. Please. Thank you. It's in that section where she said, again, I understand it's... You asked her, what were you scared of? She said, being hurt. You asked by who, and she said, Alex. Agreed? Agreed. All right. The... I'd asked you some questions about corroborating what she had done, uh, uh, her statements about what she did on the 22nd, correct? Yes. In the morning of the 22nd, right? Yes. And the one difference was that was pointed out to you on redirect is that one time she said she was returning things because she was sad, and another time she was returning things because she didn't need it. That's the discrepancy that the state pointed out. Agreed? That was one of them, yes. Okay. And the other discrepancy that was pointed out was that she said she went to Alex's, but she didn't say that she had been there previously. Agreed? Well, it was the first time she went to Racy's, but we had the camera showed that she went to Alex, the area of Alex's first. Sure. Right. I'm sure she didn't mention lots of things that she did on the morning of the 22nd, correct? She didn't say she went to the bathroom. She didn't say she ate breakfast. She didn't say all kinds of small details about non-events. Agreed? I can't say that's a small detail not to mention. That's not for you to decide. That's for the jury to decide, right? I understand. But she didn't mention other small details that of non-events. I'm going to object your honor argumentative. I was just staying in argumentative. Fair to say she didn't tell you other things that didn't result in any contact with another human being. Agreed? Agreed. But she didn't deny that she went to Alex's house and why she was going there. Agreed? She uh, said she went to Alex's house, yes. Yeah. So you agree with my question. She didn't deny that she was going over to Alex's house and why. Agreed? Agreed. Uh, in the journal, while it wasn't found that Alex's are in the car, the journal was in an electronic format, right? Yes. 
Yeah, I mean, you found it on the Google account, correct? Correct. And that would make it accessible on an iPod, correct? I don't know. Okay. Um, if an iPod had wireless connection to a Google account, you found it in the Google account, correct? It was located in the Google account. I don't think I found it. I believe one of the Dunn County Minute. deputies found it. Broad strokes. Law enforcement found it in the Google account, right? That I can agree to. So you have nothing to dispute that it could have been shown to him on the screen of an iPod. Agreed? Um, I, I can't say that it wasn't shown on an iPod. Okay. And you certainly agree that in the year 2018, sometimes things are shared in a digital format, sometimes they're shared in a hard copy format, sometimes a person just shows another person a screen that they have with them. Agreed? Yes. Um, you'd also talked about uh, these texts from, I think it was exhibit 45, 465? 465. 465. And what you'd re realize from those texts is as far back as March 12th, she'd been talking to other people about going and returning stuff to Alex, right? Correct. So she talked about this like almost 10 days before that, right? Yes. Certainly didn't seem to be a secret that that's what she was going to go do, right? I couldn't tell you if it was a secret or not. We just know that she told other people 10 days before, correct? Uh, she told Jason 10 days before. Yeah. And, uh, she told Max on that same day on the, on the 22nd, agreed? On the 22nd. Um, you'd were asked questions in which the state used the phrase, her story is he was outside of the car when she left. Is that right? I don't remember the exact words used. He used the word story, correct? I don't know for sure if that's... But it was in reference to where Alex's body was. I believe that was off of this transcript. But okay. I'm not, I'm not asking about the transcript. Nope. I'm asking about the question that you were asked, okay. right? He asked a question about where the body was, I believe. Correct. Yep. Um, since that time, it's been 18 months, correct? Yes. Um, you've had a chance to investigate the case, right? Parts of it, yes. And you've been here in court, right? Yes. And you heard Dr. Mills testify, right? Yes. And you heard Dr. Mills testify that after somebody received those injuries, they may have been able to still walk. Agreed? I believe she said that, yes. And talk. Agreed? I believe she said that, yes. Nothing else. Okay.